Gaming journalism continues to get worse. It continues to die little by little every day. And there's a lot to talk about. But the latest thing that has happened is IGN France's article on Stellar Blade, where they dismiss Eve as a protagonist, calling her a sexualized doll, and that she was made by someone who has never seen a woman. And this is really where we can have another, yet another example of how journalism is really losing the plot here. Now, the word journalism, until people started ruining it, used to carry with it a sense of authority. You're a writer at a publication that backs you, and you are meant to be more informed. You have more resources, more connections. You are privileged to more information and to a platform from which you can speak with that authority in your reporting. The moment that journalism is just dying is when we have these sorts of articles that just tell straight up lies about people. Because let's ask the real question here. How does IGN France know that Eve's design was that of a sexualized doll and that it was made by someone who has never seen a woman? I mean, that's obviously just an attack on the person because even the most cursory research on Stellar Blade would lead you to seeing that Stellar Blade's Eve is based on the model Shin Jae-un. I believe I'm pronouncing that right. And she was scanned in order to create Eve. You would also have found out that the CEO, Hyung Tae Kim, is married to his wife Ji Yoon Chai, which is an artist and has made fantastic art pieces like these. And while I assume that the writer of this article knew those facts, they still chose to phrase this this way and to also rewrite history by in the original article citing that other examples of sexualized women like Bayonetta and 2B are good versions of sexualized women that everybody loves because Bayonetta is very empowered and 2B has all of these deep philosophical ramifications that also are beloved by cosplayers, but Eve is different when that's not true at all. And as a journalist, you should know and accurately report on the fact that Bayonetta has been heavily criticized, especially at the start, and that 2B was also heavily criticized, especially at the start, and that their respective creators have been called all sorts of things for the design of those. It's just that now that the general sentiment towards them is that very positive and that they're great characters, now we can't say that people dislike them or say that we dislike them. So we're just going to say that Eve is a completely different story. And I want to be very clear here. There's nothing wrong with having the opinion of you don't like the design of Eve or you believe that the reason that this is being done you personally is evil or bad or you don't like the CEO and you think he's an idiot without any proof just because you want to think that. The problem is when you stand up on the podium that has been granted to you as a journalist and yell that into the world as fact. I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate and say that IGN is not the worst in the world. They have a lot of hits and they have a lot of misses. This Resident Evil 5 can't be remade because it's too racist a video. Uh, it shows with its dislike ratio just how bad they can miss. But they do also support some more investigative journalism, some actual real hard hitting journalism on more than one occasion using all those resources and connections they have. It's just that they're a huge machine and they pretty much output as much bad, maybe a little bit more bad than they do good. And of course, IGN France is its own thing, just like all of the other IGNs, I believe, and they have their own craziness going on, but it does spell a certain trend, not just in IGN across all of its offices, but in gaming journalism in general. Kotaku's editor-in-chief resigned recently because of the new directive that the company has, which is to focus more on guides instead of news. And you might say, well, that's confusing. Shouldn't journalists be writing and reporting on news instead of writing guides? That doesn't seem like journalism. And the answer is that Kotaku has a very specific way of doing news and has for a very long time. They normally find a message that they want to push, an agenda they want to send out into the world to convince people of, and then they find 
something that they can frame that around with the only real recognizable identity of the site becoming how much of its editor's opinions are very clearly marked and pushed onto the readers. Even when Kotaku has had exclusives and breaking news, they've injected that. And by the way, that wasn't always the case. Some of the better reporters that have existed at Kotaku that did real hard-hitting journalism have left, and there's a reason for that. So it's not that Kotaku, or specifically Geo Media, wants to stop journalism. They want to stop the journalism that Kotaku does because it's not proving profitable. Because it turns out that when you go against your audience and create an identity for yourself in the market as the people who push these sorts of opinions in everything they do, and the market responds by saying this isn't what we want, you lose money and you have to find a way to change that around in order to keep this business profitable. And hey, the people who don't like that have left and have started their own company, and if there is an audience for it and a different business model can sustain them, I'm sure there will be people who want to finance uh, their new venture, and that's good for them. You know, freedom of press is good. Everybody can have their opinion and say what they want, just like we're all free of looking at it and saying that we agree or disagree. The problem really comes with that framing of an authority, of a position of power, stating things as facts in a way that is indistinguishable from Twitter rage bait. That article is even worse from the perspective of real journalism because a real journalist would have done the investigative work towards Shift Up's other game, Nikkei, Goddess of Victory, which also features, let's say, highly sexualized virtual women that I guess they're exploiting. I don't know. And these are some of the illustrations that you saw from the CEO's wife are, uh, for this game, and maybe you would have played it, or you would have used your connections to ask about it, or to ask about the design philosophy, or what is the objective or the intention. Is there a deeper meaning to it, or are you just doing this because it sells more? And if it does sell more, and you actually make a good game, shouldn't that be the story, that they are using it to sell, but also making a great game? Shouldn't you be digging into this? Because, hey, I'm not a journalist. But I know about Nikkei Goddess of Victory. I tried to do a video where I played five gacha games, five popular gacha games, to evaluate how predatory their microtransactions were, how the different systems they used to limit things in the games were, basically if they were good or bad in their monetization, and if they were good games. And of those five games, one of them was Nikkei, and I came away incredibly surprised with it as my favorite over Honkai Star Rail, not because of the way that it sells itself or the imagery that it put in front of me. I had to overcome what felt like very blatant pandering to play it, and then I came away very surprised at how it had excellent gameplay, some of the best close to Honkai Star Rail in how much it allows your skill to influence the outcome, since you don't need to just permanently grind. If you're just really good and come up with a good strategy and execute it, you can progress through the game faster. And most importantly, I was very surprised at how great the story was and how much I enjoyed it, as well as the characterizations, the voice acting. It does take a lot of cues from Nier Automata, and I love Nier Automata. I love how this idea of these girls actually being war machines and how humanity has fallen and these threats and all of the different themes, it it can get pretty heady and philosophical. It doesn't come to the best conclusions or the best messages with those heady themes that it has, but it has really, really good character threads and character writing that made me very invested in it for the time I played it. And Stellar Blade seems to be a direct continuation of a lot of those themes down to the women turned into uh, android war machines. And I, that makes me really excited because I love Near Automata and seeing something in that style, a different interpretation of similar themes to me is cool. But there's no mention of that in that original article. There's no mention of Nikkei. There's no reaching out to inquire about the philosophy behind their design or why they do the things they do. The only thing that there is is misinformation and a gratuitous attack on a developer on an artist, on a creator. And once again, you are completely free to criticize that. You are completely free to say that you don't like something. 
but you're not free to misinform your audience under the guise of journalism. By the way, these are Nikkei developers answering community questions and, and things like that. It's a very wholesome video. Also, amazing music in Nikkei and in Stellar Blade. Great music team over at Shift Up. Just wanted to say that. These modern gaming publications have found themselves trapped in fighting against a different culture. The culture of rage bait engagement on Twitter. The culture of YouTubers farming reactions. And they were misguided in their attempt to pursue personality-driven content that really injects a lot of political agenda and personality into their content. They were misled into believing that people don't want actual reporting from institutions known for their reporting. When we have plenty of examples of good journalism, be it independent or under bigger umbrellas, being very profitable, be it technical reporting like Digital Foundry, or being an investigative journalism like Jason Schreier over at Bloomberg, or any other number of examples. And they've created this mess where their approach is to either do everything or to pander to specific audiences, and very often they go against the audience and the more general audience, specifically the ones that are just looking for that reporting, by injecting all of those opinions into things or by having all sorts of opinions all of the time that reflect back on the parent company. That's more or less the case of IGN, right? Like I said, they have some good stuff, they have some terrible stuff, and that's because they just let everybody do whatever they kind of want, even if it is going to be highly controversial, because as long as it gets clicks, it'll be fine. Although, I will tell them that it turns out that y you really don't get a lot of clicks or recognition from really bad takes that are under-researched, that are just incorrect in many ways, like that Resident Evil 5 video. Heck, we can see right here that while this video has been talked about and probably received 6, 7, 8 million views, probably much more of people attacking it and talking about it, it only has 221,000 views because all they did was create a, a video that was perfect for farming discussion and reactions, and they didn't actually create an interesting conversation about this topic. They just let somebody use resources and that position at IGN to say dumb stuff that wasn't properly researched to the journalistic standards we would expect and for people to clown on them. And they have gone and done the same thing with this in a way that I think is just inappropriate for journalism. And these, these small things all add up and eventually people get sick of it and no longer want to interact with your company, your publication, or take anything you say seriously because your identity is muddled in all of the stupidity that you allow to be injected completely void of any journalistic standards. Basically, these people are not doing their jobs. They're playing influencers. They just got hired at a publication that gives them a platform and now they're free to do this sort of thing with that backing. And it makes everything around the corporation and around the very idea of what journalism is in the modern age look terrible. And that's sad because unless the rest of the industry also moves on from this sort of thing, a lot of these legacy websites are our main sources for interviews and access to developers, for pre-release coverage, for early reviews, for you know, these are the people that are supposed to be on the front line of unbiased reporting and giving us information that's relevant to us so that we as consumers can know what is good and what is bad in the games that we purchase or don't. And instead of that, they're just becoming more sensationalized rage bait opinions. And I don't think developers are really moving fast enough into other avenues, be that other independent journalists or creators to fill that void. Anyways, that's my opinion on the whole situation. I think it's a shame. It's, it's, it's really bad. But I've been Mug Thief. Thank you for watching. Remember to like the video if you think that the things I'm saying make sense. Remember to subscribe if you want more. Very special thanks to my patrons. If you want to join, there's only one tier. It's one dollar and it does help support independent critique and journalism. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'll see you again very soon.